Hey y'all, Laura here, getting ready to have some fun with some leftover paint. All the details will be in the description below, so check those out when you get a chance. I'm giving my little 12 by 12 inch canvas a spritz of water on the back. This will keep the canvas tight and so the paint doesn't pull up in the middle and keep it from cracking. And I'm going to put a hammer in my little uh, push pins, keep the, the canvas up off the surface. This is some ultramarine blue that I have more of it than any other color. So instead of using my usual white or black as a flow extender, I'm going to use this extra ultramarine blue as a flow extender. And since it has to be a different consistency, it needs to be a thinner consistency than the rest of my paints to help that paint flow over the canvas, I'm just putting it in an, a separate cup and I'll be adding some water to thin it out. Now we get to the fun part, we get to layer the paint. And since I'm doing a couple of flip cups on my canvas, I have to think about what's on the bottom of my cup because what's on the bottom of my cup, once I flip it, is actually gonna be on the top of my painting. So I'm starting off with that beautiful 24 karat gold by Deco Art Americana. That's all sparkly and wonderful. I don't have a lot of it, so I'm gonna be a little sparing, but that way it'll just give it some real punches of color of that gold where I want it. And then the Liquitex Basics uh, Turquoise Blue comes next. It's one of my favorites. Then I'm using that Ultramarine Blue, also by Liquitex. It's a beautiful blue color. It's got just a touch of, of violet in it, so it gives this great look in the, when the light shines on it. And since I want to layer my colors, um, with contrast, dark and light, dark, light, I am using some Liquitex Basics Bright Aqua Green. And then I'm gonna use this kind of denim metallic color that I've mixed myself. That's from uh, DecoArt's Extreme Sheen Sapphire and Pewter mixed together to get that color. And then I just kind of start all over. And since this is just more layering of paint, I'm gonna fast forward so we can get to the fun part. And now that the canvas is ready, I'm gonna flip my cups. And I want them facing in two different directions. So with this cup, I'm gonna have the silver start off pointing towards the camera. So when I flip it, it will actually be, the silver will be facing away from the camera. And this other one, I'm gonna start off with the silver facing away from the camera. So when I flip it, it'll be facing towards the camera. And I don't have any silicone 
or any oil in my cups. I don't really want any cells to come up. I just want more of a swatches of color and just the natural cells that form when the paint reacts with the pouring medium and with the 24 karat gold. So I have to wait for a few minutes to make sure all of that paint kind of go settles, lets gravity do its job. And sometimes I tap on it because I get a little anxious, but we're doing a little countdown and then the exciting stuff happens. Here we go. Three, two, one, showtime. Now, when I lift these cups, I'm going to lift them quickly and move along the can canvas. And there's still a lot of paint in the bottom of that cup. And so it comes out sometimes a little stripey, a little muddled. You kind of have to just uh, practice, see what you like. I am someone that likes stripes from time to time. Sometimes I don't. So it's kind of whatever mood you're in, kind of depends on how the paint dictates. And so you'll notice, because I had the paint facing two different directions, I don't know why. I'm sure there's some sort of scientific reason for it. But they look very different when they come out of that cup, even though they're layered the exact same way. So I'm just trying to get the majority of the paint out of those cups, keep the ends of them, the bottoms of them, kind of towards the outside or the corners where I can tip them off if I don't like them. Sometimes they've got some cool effects, sometimes they don't. And I just start moving the paint around. And it's all just looking at it from different angles, deciding what do you like, what do you don't like, and going from there. Now what I don't like is I don't like those little stripe things that came out of that bottom of that second cup. So I'm going to tip off that corner first and get off as much as I can of that, the bottom of that cup without losing too much paint. I have a lot of paint on this canvas. I don't need, I have about 10 ounces of paint on this little 12 by 12 canvas. Um, I probably only needed about seven or eight ounces, but I wanted enough paint to be able to move around and kind of get um, the swatches of color the, and the effects that I want. Um, and if I had just enough paint on this canvas, I would the paint would dictate more of the look that I'm getting as opposed to me dictating the kind of paint that painting that I want. So I don't like that big old, I didn't want half of my canvas to be gold, although I love the 24 karat gold. I didn't want half of it to be a big um, swatch of gold. And so I'm just moving it around. And as I'm stretching, cells, natural cells from the reaction in the paint are starting to come forward. And so by moving the paint around, it looks like I'm getting rid of things that would be really pretty sometimes, but I'm just, it helps stretch it out. So these, um, uh, fun little things we didn't even know were there. We'll be able to come up through the paint. I'm just going to take my time here, look at it, see what I like, see what I don't like. Um, it still has um, one side of it being a lot of gold and uh, the turquoise, which I love, but the other side has a lot going on and there's just not... Um, much going on that other side. So I'm trying to decide if I want to have um, what I can do actually to kind of even out um, the composition of the painting. So when in doubt, torch it. Get out my little butane torch to get the air bubbles out. And sometimes this will also cause a reaction with the paint to um, let uh, cells come forward, come up to the surface of the paint to see what I really have before I start making any huge adjustments.
Okay, so I figured I've done about all I can do to the painting without completely messing it up. So I'm just going to clean up around the edges. This keeps the paint from continuing to um, drip off the canvas. Make sure all my corners are covered, which isn't a problem with this one. And there you go. There's my little painting with some leftover paint. I'm going to give you a closer view here in just a bit, and then all that's left is to watch it dry. I hope you all have enjoyed yourself. Thanks for sharing your time with me. Y'all are the best.